back to bed i love that idea yes or oh we can go pick up our scamp <gasps> let's go get our scamp scamping scamping scamp 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 Yeah. Yay! Yay! <laughs> is it about? Is it what you were looking for? Oh my gosh! Absolutely. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. There's it's a, so perfect. There's a. Actually, we should probably give you their stuff. Um, there's a group in Omaha that let us look at theirs, and they told oh, us to. There you go. Yep. Tell I you who they were. I ask you that, but now you reminded me. Yeah. So yeah, we've been looking at theirs a couple times. Oh, okay. That's that's them. Okay. Move it back over there. Cool. Is it you, Dave, or Sandra? Dave is going to show Sandra. Oh, she's right here. Sandra. Perfect. She'll turn the chair. Hi! Hey. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. 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 Perfect. I got it. I got it going. Perfect. All right. We'll start at your door here. All right. On the back side of your door here, you have your latch. Okay. These doors are extremely late. Okay. So if you come out of your door, we always recommend that you latch it. The wind can catch it. And this belly band right here, if you slam it back hard enough against that, it can do some damage. Yeah, sure. So just latch it. It's okay. safety. This is your screen door. All right. You just pull it across. Push the lever to release it, and it springs back into oh, itself. Nice. That that looks like an upgrade from the one. It is. Yeah, that's yeah, excellent. It is. This here is your outside lights. Okay. They operate on separate switches. So this first one here is your exit light. Right. Second one is over your propane tank. Okay. So if you have to do anything at oh, night, at night. Okay. You know, if you propane or cooking up or anything like that, it's an additional light to help out. Okay. Down here we have your 13 inch tires, okay? So in the front of your tire, you're gonna see this seal, okay? Every five to 6,000 miles, you're gonna wanna take a screwdriver like this, pop that seal off of there, there's a grease circuit, okay? okay? Give it three squirts of grease, put your seal back on. Okay. How every, many miles? By, uh, every uh, five to 6,000. Okay. So every 10 to 12,000, then you're gonna to wanna to do further maintenance of taking your wheels off, repacking the bearings, kind of cleaning things up underneath there, and putting your wheels back on. Now, with this seal, if you don't go five to 6,000 miles in a year, plan to do it once a year. Okay. Pick a time of the year and do it that way. It's always done. Okay. This here is your outside GFI. Okay. So it works as long as you are plugged in to the other side. Okay. This does not work off a of battery. Got it. For shore power only. Okay. Shore power only. All right. Right here, this there's one here and there's one on the other side. Those are your leveling uh, bars. So we have a crank inside, and I will show you where that's at. Okay. And you just crank them down, crank them up. Okay. Okay. This here is for your fresh water tank. So if you're going to be boondocking and you're going to want to rinse this out, I'll, I'll show you where to do that on the inside. But if you're going to be boondocking, we recommend that you get as close as you can to your campsite before you fill it. This is 100 pounds of weight. Oh yeah. So traveling with this hole is not recommended. Okay. But when you fill it, you can fill it and then once it's full, the water will come out these vent holes okay. and you will know you're full. This here is uh, for like a bike rack okay. or a luggage rack. Once again, we only recommend nothing over 200 pounds. Okay. okay. This is your full size fare. It is aired up. It is ready to go. Um, on a yearly basis, if you don't use this, we recommend you pull the cover off, make sure it's still aired up, you know, and make sure it's still good. Down here, we have your 31 day permit. Okay. okay, so this will allow you to get home and then license it in your state. Okay, okay. we're going to come on around here. Um, this here is your 30 amp service. So you have an air conditioner. 
We do provide you with a 15 amp adapter inside the trailer. Okay. okay. That allows you to hook up like I am here to a regular so um, outlet, extension like cord a and something. a regular okay. Um, outlet. Okay. If you need to run your air conditioner, you have to be plugged in directly to this 30 amp service. Okay. Okay. Um, there is a fan side on the air conditioner that you can run off of the adapter, but the cooling side where the compressor is going to be kicking in can only be run off of your 30 amp. Okay. So if we're parked out of some outside of somebody's house and we're using this kind of adapter, we can't use no, the I air see. conditioner. No. Okay. Correct. Wonderful. Unless, Thank you. Unless they got 30 amp. And unless they yeah. got 30 amp yeah. plug in somewhere, then you yeah. can. Yep. Okay. All right. Down here, we have your gray water tank. All right. So here, in here, we have your hose. Okay. I'm going to pull this out. You're going to pop this lid off here. Um, on the side here, you see your, your latches. And so this is going to latch onto here the same way that your cover is. Okay. Okay. You're going to drag this out to where you're going to dump and you're going to pull the lever. Okay. Okay. Now you don't have a black water no. tank, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, that's how you dump your gray water. Okay. It's 22 gallons. So that's also something if you're getting okay. ready to travel and leave a campsite, make sure you dump your gray water tank. This cover is a little snug. That way you don't lose it. Perfect. All right, we're gonna come on around here to your city water connection. Sure. Okay, so this is like if you're at a campground, you plug a garden hose into here. That will give you all the water that you're gonna need within your trailer. The only thing this will not do is fill your fresh water tank. Okay. Oh, okay. And that's that's in the back. Yeah. That's yep. in the back there, yep. So this is the vent for your furnace. Okay. Takes in the cold air, pushes out the hot air. This here is how you're gonna start your refrigerator. Oh. <laughs> now, it takes this refrigerator four to five hours to get cold, okay. okay? You cannot do that on your battery option, which is the red button here, your 12 volt. Your 12 volt is only a maintainer. Okay. okay so say now you're you're gonna be at home, you're gonna be ready to go camping, you plug in, get your refrigerator cold on the green button. That's your 120. Okay. okay. Now your refrigerator's cold, you're hooked up to your vehicle, you're ready to go. You can switch this off and switch on your 12 volt and it'll maintain the coolness of your refrigerator. Got it. Keep in mind you cannot run two of these services at a time. Okay. It and will you wreck your refrigerator. Okay. That was insane. If you so, accidentally do, you have to break it. Yeah. 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 Noted. Yeah. Just something to check. Okay. Now, if you're boondocking and don't have any source of electricity or, you know, you don't want to use your battery, you can use propane. Okay. okay. So you push this down, you move this over to high, and you hit your igniter, which is this red button on the back. Okay. And it will start. Um, the best way to see if your propane started is give it five minutes, come back, Ooh, touch this, and touch this. It's hard to see the flame within this little thing unless it's dark going. Okay. And it will touch it and it'll be hot, and it'll that's be, how you know. Yep, okay. then you'll know that it started. Okay. Um, how long uh, can the AC run on a tank of propane? The AC can Oh, not run. AC, I'm sorry, uh, refrigerator. You know, if you're not running a whole lot of other off of your ta uh, tank of propane, maybe a week. Oh, wow, okay. You know. Before you go down the road, always check these. Make sure they're tight. And Mr. Dave's going to move us out here. That way we can put your awning out. No awning. Oh, no awning. All right. Here we go. Now we'll get plugged back in. Okay. All right. We're going to come on around here. This is your 
7 Series battery. So you did get the bigger battery. Yep. Okay. So if you need to access this, all you have to do is lift this, unbuckle this here, um, lift the buckle off, lift the lid, and the uh, connections are right on top there. Okay. This here is what they call your emergency breakaway. Do you know what it's for? Yeah, if, if it comes attached from, from you while I'm driving, yeah. Yep. Which so, I don't ever want to... I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like mentioning this. Well, this is a disclaimer right, here. Right. <laughs> but yes, we will hook this to your vehicle. Okay. okay. And what it is, is it's hooked alongside of your safety chains, not to your safety chain, because okay. if your safety chain comes unhooked, this isn't going to do you any good. Right. So alongside of it, then it's hooked back to itself, like this. And then if you do come unhooked, what it's going to do is it's going to pull the pin out and it's going to lock up your brakes on your um, trailer. Then you're going to, when everything's come to a stop and you've gone and had a nice long drink, you're going to come back, put, all you got to do is push your pin back in and it resets your brakes. Okay. Okay. This is your seven way here and we will attach this to your vehicle. Okay. when we hook you up. This here is your dual propane. Okay, so we always recommend that when you guys um, turn this on, that you turn on both tanks. Okay. okay. The reason is, is because if one goes empty, one, it'll switch over to the other one. Automatically? Automatically. Okay. Okay, so say in the middle of the night, you're using your furnace, and this one goes empty. It's gonna automatically switch over to this one as long as you have it open. You're gonna come out in the morning and you're gonna notice that this little indicator right here is gonna be red. Okay. Right now it's green because both of your tanks are full. Okay. So then you're gonna take this little nose, you're gonna push it over to here, indicating that this is the tank now that it's using. Okay. This shuts off any kind of leakage back through here okay. so that you can unhook it. You can take it and get it filled, bring it back, put it back on, and then open it back up. Any questions on your propane? Okay. All right, let's go on inside. All right, right here at your door. Oh, this is your cover. Okay. So I'm just going to set that out here. You have what we call our battery shut off okay. okay if you're going to store your trailer okay underneath here you're going to notice a very colorful little dial and that is going to be your voltmeter okay that little voltmeter is the thing that you are going to watch if you're boondocking and you're using a lot of battery power that okay. will tell you where you're at and how much um, voltage you have left in your battery and when you are going to need to hook up and, and charge recharge it, it. That's, a, that's great. That thing and this thing over here, which is your carbon monoxide uh, detector, will drain your battery if you leave it stored for a matter of time. Gotcha. Okay. So that is why we recommend that you put this in the off position. Okay. That shuts everything off within your trailer. Um, that way nothing can drain your battery. Okay. Um, I, I, where do you guys live? Omaha, Nebraska. Okay, so you have snow. You have yeah. winter. Yeah. So they also recommend with your battery of disconnecting it and bringing it inside where it's warm. Okay. 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 I'm going to leave this in the off position because everything is going to work inside of here we're plugged in. because we're plugged in. Gotcha. So um, how low before I should make sure I'm recharging? Like what's... Um, I don't think you really want it to go much below oh, a couple lines there. And I think couple lines is about between nine and ten okay um at that point i think you're gonna you're gonna want to make, make sure, sure charging it yep, up. that you're charging it up because then you don't have much left okay i think full full is 14. okay and when i'm driving and the car is charging should that be on or off it doesn't matter doesn't matter awesome. because that cord overrides okay. this here cool it just feeds it right in the battery yep okay all right, I'm going to put your bunk beds up here. So how you're going to do this is you're going to lift this up 
like this, and you're gonna use it kind of as something for you to set this back on. Cause this is a little on the heavy side. So you're gonna go mm. like that. That way it gives you both hands. Underneath here is a screw head. You're gonna latch your pole onto it and the same on the other side. And if you're talented, you'll get them both in there without one falling over. <laughs> You're talented. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this little piece right here is meant to fill in this space, this gap that we have back here. And this actually can ride back here. You don't have to take it out. Okay. It just kind of uses up excess space. Okay. So taking it down, you're gonna do just the opposite. You're gonna pull this up again. travel with it down always, right? Yes, yeah. you always need to travel with this down. You're going to drop this back down and then just put this down like that. These will ride back here if you want them to okay. or they can ride underneath there. Okay. Underneath here you have your window and I'll show you your gravel shield when we go back out. Okay. This is your refrigerator right here. So we always recommend when you're going to travel that you travel with this in the locked position. That way, if you have food in here and something comes against the door, it's not gonna knock it open and you're not gonna come into a big mess. <laughs> All right, lighting your stove. You're going to push this button down Turn it to light and just light it like that. Now, if your propane hasn't been turned on, I turned the propane on early this morning when I got here. It might take a little bit because it's going to have air in the, the line. Yeah. You mm -hmm. got to get the air out. Okay. So just like that. Now, this is your furnace. So on the back side here, you're going to notice your thermostat. Okay, on the bottom here is an on and off button. So you're gonna turn it on. With these arrows, you're gonna set the temperature that you want your furnace to come on at or run at. In a little bit here, this is gonna kick on because we set it kind of high to make sure that it does, so kick, it does in. kick on. <laughs> yeah. So it takes it about 40 to 50 seconds for it to blow out all the excess air. she just lit. Yeah, you could hear it. Yeah. Hear yeah. That clicking sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when you're ready for it to be done, all you have to do is hit your off button. And it's about the same thing, about a minute to clear everything out and it will shut it off by itself. All right. This runs on the propane. Yes. And the battery or propane and whatever I'm plugged into. Yeah, okay. whatever. Yep. Because how it works is that when you're plugged in, there's a converter. So the converter is converting that 120 to the 12 okay. volt. Mm -hmm. So that's how that is running. Up here, we have all your little goodies. This is your adapter. This here, we even give you a remote. Wow. <laughs> I think I can reach everything from one <laughs> <I> place. <know>. <laughs> it seems kind of silly, but okay. But you can't. This is no. for this fan back here. Okay, as you do notice, all of the buttons are on the back side of the fan. Okay. Or if you manually want to open and shut, you can use that. But you push your power button. Um, you'll end up pushing it twice initially because the first time it turns the, re the remote on, oh, second yes. time. And you have to kind of make sure that you're pointing it at the fan. Right now we have air coming in at 100%. Okay. Now, you can lower this all the way down to Zippo, you know, um, or if you're in here and it starts to rain, okay, oh, yeah. this does not have a rain sensor on it. Okay. So you can take the cover and you can close the cover. 
then this basically turns into a ceiling, ceiling fan. fan. Okay. okay. Yep. It just is moving the air around here in the trailer. Perfect. If you are in here cooking and you would like to use it as an exhaust fan, so what you can do is push this button. It will stop your fan and it will turn the direction that it's going. Just like that. Excellent. Yeah. Now, on this remote, there is an auto button. Okay. You can push this auto button. You will notice a green light come on the back of your fan. You can set the temperature here, set temperature with this plus and minus button as to when you want that fan to come on. Oh my gosh, oh. that's you know? nice. So the only thing to keep in mind is add to your checklist, make sure the green light's off. Yeah. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. because going down the road, mm -hmm. It's going to get hot in here. <laughs> it's going to yes. turn itself on. And it's going to turn itself yes. on and it's going to open that hood <laughs> and you're going to end up finding your like, hood yep. down the road someplace. <laughs> you know, so um, yeah, that okay. is a nice feature, feature. Just remember to turn it off. All you got to do is push that button again and it turns the green light off. Great. So, remember I mentioned to you that there is a fan side of this air conditioner that you can run while being plugged into the um, 15 amp adapter. So that's on this side right here. Okay. This here is for your cold air. So it will move quite a bit of air. You can open these here and you can have air go wherever you want. You can close this up and really push air wherever you want. Now, to run your AC side, it would be the blue side. Okay. So you would have low, medium, and high. Got it. So, yep. And, and just, you just turn it and it turns on? Turn this and turns on. Okay. And it will, it will cool you up right out of this drain. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've heard. Yeah. They cool very nicely. Um, and I know that there are people, I don't know if there's any videos online that have figured out how to get the air conditioner to start on the 15 amp service. Oh, okay. We just don't recommend it. Gotcha, that I don't know. I do know that people put uh, like soft starts in there um, yep. to run like smaller generators. Um, yep, but, and uh, if you wanna, uh, the gen Honda 3500 is the generator that the size of generator that they recommend if you wanna run off of a generator. Okay. That will give you your 30 amp Gotcha. Um, so you can run your air. Okay. So, any questions there? Nope. Okay. I am going to trade places with you. Alrighty. And we are going to check out what's underneath here. This little leaf right here rides very nicely. Or not rides, but when you want to have your table up. You can set it right there, so okay. you can sit on it, get mm -hmm. it out of the way. Now, you will notice that the edges of your cushions are a little bit over the edge of the table, so you find that you might have to try and lift these up a little bit to get your table past them. Put the end tabs in their holders and drop the leg. So easy. Yeah. yeah. Now, be careful, don't run, don't ride like this, okay? The, this table will do this, you'll break your leg. Mm. We've seen holes put in the floor mm. from the legs Ooh. and then um, would take your hardware right off. So down here, we have your fuse box. So on this side, you have your 120 breakers. Okay. okay. It's just like a house breaker. If one gets flipped, all you got to do is flip it back. Okay. On this side is your 12 volts right here. Those you need to carry kind of an extra little pack of them okay. in case one blows. Um, we don't provide those, but you can go to any hardware mm -hmm. or um, auto, auto store, store. Okay. and make sure you just have a, a couple of, of them on. Them too. Yeah, a couple on hand. In here, we have your 25 foot power cord. Okay. Okay. Also down there, you're going to see a silver box. Uh -huh. Okay, that silver box is also plugged into an outlet. Okay, that is your converter. Okay. Mm. Now, if you come into your trailer and absolutely nothing is working, I mean, like literally, you can't find anything to work inside here. 
Probably what's happened is that long cord has gotten wrapped around that plug-in and pulled it out of the mm. outlet. Okay. So just check it on an occasion just to make sure that it's secure in the outlet there. There is some storage space in there since you guys don't have a water heater and stuff. So anything that you put in there, just make sure that it doesn't get wrapped up in the cord. On this side, you have, it's carbon monoxide and propane. Okay, okay. Yeah. so you both have the furnace and you have the um, cooktop. Mm -hmm. So if you hear that, please get out of your trailer. Mm. I've had people ask me, well, why can't I just open my door? It's like, no, please get out. Right, you're still in the space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't let it, it air. And you don't want to explode. Yeah. yeah. And let it air out and then safely try and figure out what okay. happened. Underneath here is your fresh water tank. Now, I mentioned to you that we recommend that you rinse this out if you're going to be boondocking and you're going to actually be using it as a source of water. See the little white valve on the end of the tank there. Mm -hmm. So when you want to empty it, all you have to do is turn that valve. Okay. And it will empty out underneath your trailer. Okay. Um, put a when you go to rinse it out, put a garden hose in the back there. Run water into your fresh water tank. Let it fill up a little bit. Open it up and let it drain out. Just rinse the inside of that tank out. Okay. okay. And then winterizing this tank. Um, I mean, just make sure it's empty. Do you have to put in the? Um. Actually, what you're gonna need to do, yeah, you will probably okay. have to put some water, a little bit of water, in there, and your RV antifreeze okay. because okay. you actually are going to use this. Pump it. Okay. And pump it to bring the RV antifreeze up into your faucet okay. and into your sink drain, okay. you know, so you might have to put some okay. winterization stuff. I'll, I'll watch that video before next year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I'm gonna put your table back together, or your bed back together. You take and drop it down like that, lift one side, Lift the other and let your table down. And it can be stubborn. There you go. Just like that. Put your leaf back in. Take your cushions. Put them in a teepee like that and just drop them down. Mm. And they snug right in. Perfect. Wonderful. Any questions? Not so far. On the back side here, you have your fire extinguisher. Okay. Okay. So before you leave your trailer, always shut your lights off manually because since we're going to hook you up to your car, if you leave these lights on, as soon as we hook you up to your car, all the lights are going to come back on. Mm. It's going to look like there's somebody in your yeah. trailer having a party going down the road. <laughs> so we recommend that you turn these off. That way there's no lights on in your trailer. Right. Okay. Now, with your keys, both these keys are the same. Okay, okay they're identical. So you're going to take flat side, go to 3 o'clock, pull your key out. That locks your handle. Okay. You have a deadbolt, okay? So you're gonna put it in, you're gonna turn it to nine o'clock, back to noon, pull your key out. Okay, that okay. one's a deadbolt? That one's a deadbolt. Okay. So when you're in at night too and you want to have your door locked, that's how you would lock yourself in. But we always recommend that you travel with both locks on because if you hit a good enough bump, if you only lock the handle, it can pop the door. Okay. Okay, so always travel with them both. There's your keys. Your gravel shield up here. So we recommend when you're traveling that you always have these hooked, okay? So you're gonna unhook them. And if you wanna get something else for hooks, you certainly can. You're gonna unlatch it. 
like that, and all you have to do is lift it. Okay. It lifts right off of here. And that gives you your window. Wonderful. Always travel, when you have your window like this on the front of your trailer, always travel with your gravel shield on. That will save on any damage to your window. So then you just latch it back up, just like that. Perfect.